Chazon Ish says that in addition to the labor of Torah learning results in tremendous love and devotion to the observation of the details of the mitzvah. The halachot of which he is laboring over in his innermost self will tell him that this is what he was created for. One of the greatest benefits that you have in learning deeply why we do what we do as Jewish people, why we act the way we act, why we look the way we look, why we celebrate the way we celebrate, why we run away from sinful things like we do, and so on and so forth. The more you learn about it, Chazuni says, that's going to give you the love for the mitzvah, and you yourself will want to start doing it. You yourself will want to start doing it. We have one Talmid, one of the Talmidim of Rav Ephraim, who took on himself to start learning the Shas. Before he started learning the Shas, he was a off the derech yeshiva bachul already from years ago, hasn't kept Shabbat in probably 10 years. But we made an agreement with them to start learning the Shas. Sure, make some money, learn the Shas, why not? So he started learning. So before you know it, he finished Masech Bachot. His wife tells us, you know, Rabbi, he started making bachot every time, blessings every time he eats something now. It's Baruch Hashem. Then he started learning Masechet Tanit. Oh, you know, Rabbi, he started keeping Yom Kippur. Baruch Hashem. Before you know it, okay, take on Masechet Shabbat. Before you know it, he's keeping Shabbat. He's like, honey, we gotta get prepared for Shabbat. Shabbat, Shahu, what? What Shahu, what? Shabbat, Shabbat's coming, Shabbat's coming. What, what's to us on Shabbat? Shabbat's another day. No, what do you mean Shabbat? We gotta keep it, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. Okay, but it's only Wednesday. Exactly, we got to get ready. He started learning about the rules, and because he toiled over them, he started falling in love with them. He started becoming more passionate about them. And Baruch Hashem keeps the entire Torah. Why? The more you learn, the more you start loving the mitzvot. The people that are robots are people that don't learn. They simply do because somebody told them to do it. And as I told you earlier today, Robots eventually malfunction. Robots eventually break. Don't be a robot. You see, in the previous generation of Abutai Karim, we had simpler people. The Sephardic Judaism was very different back then than it was now. And the reason why is because my grandparents and some of your grandparents they had what's called emunat mima, where even if they weren't talmidei chachamim, they knew all of the halachot and everything, they had a lot of respect for their rabbis, and they had complete emunah in Hashem. Simple emunah, that even at the test of time, they kept it. But unfortunately, that did not last to get to their kids and to their grandkids. That's why it's not recommended to have simple emunah. But if you hear the stories of some of the non non chachamim of the previous generation, you realize, wow, how far we've dropped in such a short period of time. Just a uh, couple of days ago, or yesterday actually, there was a Shabbat Chatan of a uh, family of Rabbi Fahim, and they uh, went to uh, the Chatan's family, the Shachar family. And the grandfather of the Shachar family, Alaba Shalom, his name was uh, Aaron Shachar. He was a Sephardic Jew that was a, uh, the barber for Rav Tzion Abba Shaul, one of the G'dolei Ador in the previous generation. So the barber, he was very close to Rav Tzion Abba Shaul. Now he didn't know a lot of Torah, but anytime somebody would tell him a mitzvah, right away he would do it. Right away, no wasting time. No wasting time. But he was a simple man, honest living. The rabbi would come to him once a month, that's the halacha, you're going to get a haircut every month. Rabbi would come to him and he would give him a haircut and they would talk and that's it. Simple Jew following the law to the best of his ability, but he wasn't a Tamid Chacham. Does that mean that he was a Rasha? Chas Shalom, Tzadik. How do we know he's Tzadik? From this story. From this story. When you learn of one mitzvah, you learn about the entire person. So one day he decides that he wants to put roof tiles. Roof tiles. So he gets a guy come to his building. He says to him, I want you to give me an assessment of how much it's going to cost me to uh, do roof tiles. So the guy comes over there, also another safari Jew. There in El Tisrael, he comes on the roof, he says, oh, it's going to cost you $5,000. He 
So, okay, one second. I pay right away. So hold on one second. We're on the roof. He goes into the house, takes out money that he's been saved up over a long period of time, got $5,000, comes up, and he says, here you go, hey, $5,000, when are you going to start? That's the type of honest people they were. They believed in people. Today, you don't give anybody anything because you know that if you give them the money, they never come back. But in those days, there was actually some M9 people. Give them the $5,000. He says, I start tomorrow. Okay. As they're talking, some Hasid Breslev got to the bottom of the floor over there, not, not where they were on the roof, was downstairs and decided to start doing it Bodadut. Start doing it Bodadut. Bodadut 40 years ago already, 50 years ago. He's like, Abba, Abba, help me, help me, Abba. I don't have any money for this. I don't have any money for that. Please, Hashem, help me, Abba, help me. And he starts crying to Akadosh Baruch Hu. This simple breast of just talking to Akadosh Baruch Hu, help me, help me. So, he, Rav Aron Shachar, he says to the contractor, do me a favor. I'm going to give you the money. But just give, give me the money I just gave you for a second. I'll give it back to you. Just give it to me. So the contractor gives him the 5000 back. He puts the rubber band tight on the money. $5,000. Tuck. And throws it right where the guy, the breast lover is. Doesn't know who he is. Throws it right where he is. And he tells the contractor, no, hide, hide, hide. She doesn't see where it comes from. She doesn't see where it comes from. She doesn't think that it's us. And all of a sudden they hear the breast liver Hasid says, Oh, Abba, thank you. Thank you. What a blessing. Oh, Abba, thank you so much. Now I can pay the bills and I can pay this and I can pay that. Abba, I love you. I love you. Now that Hasid, what does he think? He thinks that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave it to him. What's the real answer? HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave it to him. Now you could say, no, no, what do you mean? It was uh, uh, Rabbi Aaron Shachar over there. Aaron Shachar, he gave it to him. No, no, no. HaKadosh Baruch Hu used Aaron Shachar to give it to him. It's just that Aaron Shachar was righteous enough, heard about a mitzvah. I'm doing it right now. He needs money, I'm giving it to him right now. Why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to want. Now the contractor was so impressed by him. He was so impressed by him. He says, Mr. Shachar, I've never seen anything like that before. I want to be partnered with you. Tomorrow the job I start, 50% off. 50% on me, 50% on you. 25, 2,500. Shachar, Aaron, Shachar says, No, shalom. I'm going to go give you the entire 5,000 right now. It's my mitzvah. It's my mitzvah. I want the mitzvah. That's what he wants. He wants the mitzvah. Didn't know a lot of Torah. Wasn't a big Talmud Chacham. But he knew that when there's an opportunity to do a mitzvah, there's a Jew that's crying, needs help, there's, a, there's an opportunity to learn, there's an opportunity to do, there's a, I'm going to go do it right away. That's the previous generation, Rabotai. Those were people that were simpler, but they had full emunah in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In our generation, Rabotai, Kareem, we don't have this or that. Many people don't have this or that. That's why the Chazonish is more relevant now than ever before. If you want to get to such a point, you have to toil, you have to work, you have to do something about it you can't just sit there and do nothing about it you can't just think that you're just going to be the chacham without toiling because that's sometimes what people think